Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and we are currently being hit with some crazy type of, what are they calling it, a bomb cyclone? Did you ever? So, okay, it's so ridiculously cold outside. There's snow just flailing around all the place like confetti on New Year's Eve, and it's time to warm ourselves up, you know what I mean? So, what are we gonna do? I was just in the south, I definitely hit some big cities. I hit Mobile, Alabama, I hit Biloxi. I know it's not Biloxi, it's Biloxi, Mississippi. I was corrected. And I hit, of course, Pensacola, Florida, and the crown jewel of the Southern Creole cuisine, New Orleans, Louisiana. So while I was down there, of course, I was inspired to make a very specific dish that will give a lot of zest to your mouth and just make you so happy with each and every single slurp. Guys, we are talking a gumbo. And not Gumby, Gumbo. Believe it or not, there's no gum in a gumbo. And that, isn't that disappointing? Now this one's a little more time intensive than other recipes because there's a little bit of prep that goes into it, but other than that, it's really very, very simple. So guys, let's get on our trombones and our tubas and form a brass band because we're gonna strut the streets in New Orleans and have some big, easy Creole gumbo. So the first thing I wanna start with is some okra because by the way, did you know that gumbo actually means okra? That's how we get the name. So it's kind of a key ingredient into a gumbo. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a frozen 10 ounce box of cut okra. It's already cut for me. If it's not, you can just cut it yourself. But I wanna make sure it's nice and thawed because this is probably a frozen brick in here right now. I'll show you what I mean. See? frozen brick just like this. So what I want to do is I'm going to put this through a little fine mesh strainer or a colander and just run it under some hot water so it thaws a bit. Alright, I'm going to put some hot water on now and just let it run under there for a bit until it thaws and it's no longer a brick of ice. And then after a few moments of running under the hot water for about 30 seconds, you can start to break it apart with your hands. It actually feels a little slimy to the touch, but that's okra for you. And then once all of our okra kind of comes apart just like this into individual little pieces here, we're done. We can just turn off our water and we can just set this aside and we'll come back to it a little later. So now I want to take one large green bell pepper and then dice it up really finely like this. We want it into little, small, little, little pieces. Now we'll take a medium yellow onion, also diced up rather finely just like that. And then we want to take a bunch of celery, but out of that bunch, we only want to take two stalks or two ribs. Some call them stalks, some call them ribs. However, they don't look like the kind of ribs that I like to eat. But um, regardless of that, um, true story, I actually hate celery when it's in its hard, natural state. I like it when it's nice and cooked and soft, but a lot of people would disagree with me. But anyway, we want to take two of these ribs here and then also some of the leafy tops here, okay? And we have our celery nice and finely chopped just like this. Make sure it's nice and finely chopped like that. And then we have our loose leaves that are inside the celery set aside. We wanna save those as well. And for our final vegetable, let's take some scallions and I'm going to chop these up as well. And I'm gonna chop them up into pieces just like this and I'm gonna divide them up into two piles. The whiter, crunchier part in this side and the softer, greener part in this side, all right? Now let's get to our protein. I wanna use about a pound of chicken tenders here and you can use also chicken thighs that are boneless and skinless but I feel like chicken tenders are gonna be really easy to cut up and just even simpler with less fat on them. So chicken tenders I'm using but again, you can also use thighs or you can use breasts. But like chicken tenders or chicken thighs are really the best way to go for gumbo. But again, the choice is yours. Cut up into little bite-sized chunks just like this. And now I want to take one pound of andouille sausage, or any smoked hickory type sausage. Sliced up into little tiny corners about a quarter of an inch thick or so, just like that. We want it to be nice and kind of chopped up in tiny little pieces to go in our gumbo. Or you could, if you want them as little discs, you can leave it like that too. Also, what they do in the South typically is they use something called tassel ham. And since I don't have any of that up here, I'm using the andouille sausage, which is also totally acceptable for a gumbo or like I said, any other smoked or hickory sausage. So now I'm gonna go to the Instant Pot and I'm gonna add in four tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter. So I want to come down to my control panel of my pot and I want to select it so it's on the saute function. I'm using the ultra so I'm going to push that in there and don't worry about the time. I want to go down and make sure that I'm on high or the more setting, whatever the temperature is on your pot. Some say more, some say high. It's the same thing. Then hit the start button and let's heat that pot up. And once my butter is all melted and sizzling, I'm now going to add in my vegetables. It's all the vegetables I chopped up, and in terms of the scallions, just the crunchy white bottom part for that. We're not gonna add that softer green top just yet. And then stir that up in the butter for about five minutes until everything softens a bit. And then after everything is coated, then just let it set, and then just continue to stir every so often within those five minutes. 
And then after about five minutes of some stirring and setting with these veggies, they're gonna have softened a bit and cooked down a little bit. This is gonna look fabulous. And now what we wanna do is we wanna add in our chicken and sausage. Now let's toss that around and everything in the pot with the, uh, the, all the vegetables and the butter and do that for another five minutes. We don't want to get everything fully cooked all the way through, but just enough for the chicken to start turning white and for the, uh, for the sausage to get a little browned and release some of that sausage grease. Now you see how the chicken is starting to turn white throughout? That's good. And be a little bit harsh with that stirring spoon in there. It's okay, we want the chicken to even get a little bit broken up. That's even better. Because I like my gumbo to have the chicken to be slightly shredded, so be a little bit aggressive with that mixing spoon. After about three to five minutes, you're gonna be done with that. We're gonna take it out of there, but just let it cook in there for a little bit. We don't want it to get fully cooked because we're gonna take this out in a second and then we're gonna just do a little bit of a roux in there and then we're gonna add it back in with all the wonderful other deliciousness. Take it out of there. Go, let's just transfer to a bowl, try to get everything out of that pot because we're about to make way for our roux. All right, there's our chicken sausage and all of our vegetables and we're gonna set that aside for the time being. So now let's return our pot to the Instant Pot. And now I'm gonna add in a half a cup of vegetable oil as well as a teaspoon of Tony Shachery's Original Creole Seasoning. If you can find this, awesome. If not, you can use really any Cajun seasoning like this will do. But this is the stuff I love and I can link it in the recipe if you can't get it in your local supermarkets. It's a southern thing. I'm gonna add that to the oil. And I'm also gonna add in a half a cup of all-purpose flour. And now I'm gonna quickly whisk up all the flour with the oil and everything in the pot, and this is gonna start to make our roux. All right, now we see our roux in here. We're gonna wanna cook this and whisk it around for a good five minutes in here until the color of our roux starts to darken a little bit. It's gonna start to get like a peanut buttery color, and when that happens, we're gonna be ready for our roux to be finished, but we're gonna have one finishing touch there. But also, while you're doing the roux here, you wanna really make sure you're constantly stirring. It's gonna have a tendency to wanna stick to the bottom of the pot. And I like the fact that a few onions clung to the pot before when we poured all the vegetables out because it's gonna create this awesome flavor, especially into the roux now, and I love that. It's okay if they're a little bit burnt in in there. It's going to make it for a wonderful seasoning. And as our roux simmering and darkening up a little bit into a beautiful color, what I'm going to do now is add something a little unconventional. Some people might judge me for it, but that's okay, because you know what? Have I ever steered you wrong before? Exactly. This stuff is going to be great. I'm going to be adding a little bit of Gravy Master or Kitchen Bouquet if you have that inside of my roux. It's going to really make the color perfect, and it's going to set it over the top. Um, traditional roux are typically, you know, made in the on the stove top for an hour, and the Instant Pot is stainless steel, so it might be a little trickier to get that color exactly how you want it, but this Gravy Master is going to do it and the flavor is going to be completely, completely intact and just as better than ever. So I'm only going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of it in there. And then stir that up with the roux. Alright, so now that my roux is looking nice and good, I'm going to add in a few other things. I'm going to add in a half a tablespoon of lemon juice or the juice of half a lemon that's freshly squeezed. I'm going to add in two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Stir that up with the roux. See now when you add the Worcestershire sauce and the lemon juice, it actually makes the roux puff up a little bit now. It's not just sitting there anymore and the color is looking really good. I'm also going to add in a teaspoon of Zatarin's Concentrated Shrimp and Crab Oil. A little bit of this goes a long way, so just one teaspoon worth of it. And I'm going to add in a tablespoon of crushed garlic. And mix that all around in the pot together, deglazing the bottom, scraping it. Perfection. Now let's add some broth. I'm gonna add four cups of ham broth in the pot. And what is ham broth, you ask? Well, I am so glad that you did, because basically, better than bouillon? Well, they make practically every flavor, except like, uh, wet noodle. But regardless, if they made that, I'd probably get it too. But they do make a ham base, so what you do to make that is you just simply use one teaspoon of the base per one cup of water, and that equals one cup of broth. Now this stuff is amazing, you can find it online, and I'll link to it in the recipe. As well as four cups of chicken broth. Now if you don't have any ham broth, you can just use eight cups of chicken broth, but I really like the ham broth in there. And for the chicken broth, I'm using Better Than Bouillon's chicken base. Uh, this is also reduced sodium that I'm using, by the way, and this giant one, this huge jar makes 76 cups. You can find this in Costco. Costco, by the way, typically sells the chicken, the beef, and the vegetable bases. The other ones, like the ham base here, are a little tougher to find, but you can find them in some supermarkets, or all of them can be found online. And this is also a smaller jar, which makes 38 cups of broth. Now be sure to deglaze the bottom of that pot, and by that I mean to really take a spatula and scrape the bottom until it feels nice and smooth. We don't want any of that roux stuck on there. Let's do what it takes. Now I want to take a 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes. You can use the regular kind, you can use the kind that has garlic and onion, you can use the kind that has like jalapenos in there if you want, whatever you want. I like this kind. 
We're gonna dump it in the pot with all of its juices. Again, deglaze the bottom of that pot. And now we're gonna allow this to bring to a simmer a little bit, let it bubble up. And while we're bringing our gumbo base to a simmer, I'm going to add in a few spices to season this thing up. I'm gonna start with two teaspoons of a light brown sugar, two teaspoons of a black pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now you can use more or less to taste, but uh, I think one teaspoon makes it perfect. It's gonna make it the perfect kick. Two teaspoons of dried thyme, one teaspoon of cumin, two teaspoons of paprika, and because I can't get enough of this stuff, a tablespoon and a half more of Tony's Shashery, or any other Cajun seasoning. All right, now let's stir everything together now that it's bubbling up. All right, the last step, let's add back in our meat and our vegetables. And into the pot you go. All right, give everything a final stir in there. Let's secure our lid. In the Ultra, when I seal my lid, I'm automatically in the sealing position, so don't worry about that. If you're on the Duo Series or any other one, just make sure you're in sealing position. Now I want to come down to my pot and hit the Keep Warm Cancel button, or whatever the button is that will turn your pot off. And now I want to go up to the Pressure Cook or Manual mode, whatever your pot says. Pressure Cook or Manual, they're the same function. And I'm going to now go here, and I want to be on 10 minutes, which is exactly what I'm already set at here, for high pressure, and then just start it up. And our pin just popped up. And now that we're done, we're gonna allow a 10 minute natural release. That means we're gonna wait until this counts up to 10, and then we're gonna do a quick release. And the reason why I'm doing a 10 minute natural release on this is because we have a lot of liquid in this pot, and there's also a roux in there with flour. And to avoid everything spurting out of the top when we quick release right away, by doing a 10 minute natural release and letting the steam release on its own without doing anything at all at first, it's gonna help alleviate that. So again, in short, just wait until this counts to 10, and then follow with a quick release. And now that 10 minutes have passed, let's follow it up with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so let's take our lid off. And, oh boy, there's some gumbo. It smells insane in here, like the Mardi Gras is coming down the street. Let's stir that up. Okay, take a spoon and just stir this gumbo up. Oh boy, unbelievable already. I love it. So now I'm gonna come down to the control panel and hit the cancel button. And I wanna go back to the saute function and press that in and I'm all good to go on high level and I wanna hit start. And make sure we bring our gumbo to a bubble. I wanna add in my okra from earlier and the greener, softer part of our scallions. Stir everything up. I also want to make a cornstarch slurry by taking three tablespoons of cornstarch mixed with three tablespoons of water. And make that a nice smooth consistency so it goes from feeling like cement to being nice and smooth. And now that our gumbo's boiling, let's add in our cornstarch slurry and stir it around. And then let's let that cook in there and simmer and bubble in there for another two minutes or so. And then we're gonna turn the heat off. And while our gumbo's bubbling with the cornstarch slurry added in, we're going to now prepare some shrimp if you'd like to add them. And they're optional, but I think it's a true gumbo with some shrimp in there. I'm going to take one pound of shrimp and I'm gonna use thawed raw shrimp with the skin off and the tail off. If you want the tail on, that's fine, you can leave it on. I find it to be easier this way. You can use frozen shrimp too, just make sure that it is uncooked shrimp. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some more of this Tony Shatcheries on top, just a little bit like that, and then just mix everything together by hand and coat my shrimp together. Perfect. And as my gumbo's bubbling, I'm gonna add that shrimp in there. Let it cook for about three to five minutes. Now, shrimp will cook depending on how large it is, okay? But keep an eye on it, it cooks really quickly regardless. And we want it to just go from that raw looking color to more like a pinkish white color. You'll know when it's done, it'll also start to curl up. Now, my final step is a true secret ingredient, guys, and don't be grossed out by this, but I am going to be adding in, you guessed it, a little bit of ketchup. Trust me on this, it's gonna be amazing. I feel like it sets it apart from everything else, and it's the last thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a third of a cup of the ketchup and then just stir it up and it's gonna melt into the gumbo. And once our shrimp is looking all nice and curled up like that and the color looks exactly how it is, mostly white with a little bit of pink, we are ready to go. Let's serve it up. And look at this beautiful, beautiful gumbo we have here, guys, just loaded with everything. I mean, sausage, you got chicken, you got shrimp, you got tons of vegetables, and of course you have the okra, which makes it a true gumbo. All right, so now let's prepare a bowl of this fine gumbo. We're gonna start off with a little bit of rice in that bowl. You can use my tried and true rice recipe from the other day. All right, and now let's add in our gumbo. And there we go. I gotta tell you, this is one loaded gumbo. <laughs> and 
there we have it. And then mix it up a little bit and get the rice all combined with everything else. Oh yeah, perfection. All right, let me try it out. It's my favorite part of every video. Here we go. Ooh, this thing is loaded. Now that's a combo. It feels like New Orleans. Okay, I'm really in Queens. That is so good. Oh, look at all this shrimp. Mm. Mm. And the sausage and the chicken. So tender, melting your mouth. Good. Mm. As it's like going down my throat and into my belly, I can just like hear the brass bands playing. It brings back memories of good times. A gumbo is like, it's not really a soup, but it's not really a stew. It's somewhere in between. It's just a whole beast of its own. And it's it's really just sensational. And this gumbo is perfect for those f -f -f frigid temperatures outside. It is cold. Guys, if you enjoy these recipes, go to PressureLuckCooking.com. There are so many recipes with more coming. I already have over 100. And again, like I said, it's gonna just keep on growing. Hover over any photo and any recipe, and you can pin it to your favorite Pinterest board. It's that simple. Go to facebook.com slash pressureluckcooking and like that page for any updates. Anything you want to know, I have tips. I'm very active there. I do some humor there as well. You'll enjoy it, hopefully. And um, also at Pressure Lock on YouTube. Subscribe there. Instagram, Twitter, all that jazz. I got it all. Speaking of jazz, this thing could feed a jazz band. It makes a bunch. Woo! I love me some gumbo.